Hi everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. Anyway, as usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. Maps tell a story. According Australia's official history, first landfall by Europeans was in the year 1606. It's therefore strange that there are maps of Australia from before that time. This is a map by Nicholas Vallard, 1547. The map is called Java La Grande. It shows the Australian coastline with tribes and dozens of towns already mapped out. Historians claim this can't be Australia because Australia wasn't discovered until 1606, which is just your usual circular reasoning. But it sure isn't Java, which is the old name for the Indonesian islands. The only landmass near Java of this size is Australia. Some researchers say it must be Western Australia, but Nicholas Vallard's maps were flipped. South is north and north is south. I believe this to either be Northern Australia, the pointed area looks like Northern Australia today, or Eastern Australia with the southern part frozen. As shown in an earlier video, Australia used to be part of the frozen Antarctic before the continent broke off in an unknown cataclysmic event. Here's a 1572 map in which Australia is still part of the Antarctic. And this is a 1572 map in which Australia is still mostly submerged. I don't believe both of these maps represent the world in 1572. Maybe they were published then, but they show two different stages. In the first stage, Australia is part of the Antarctic. Post-cataclysm, it's flooded. After the water recedes, modern Australia appears separate from the Antarctic. This is another pre-cataclysm map of Australia and the world, published 1547. We see why Vallard might have mistaken Australia for Java, seeing how both were in tight proximity to each other. And this is a 1606 map in which Australia is called India Meridionalis. If Australia was only just discovered in 1606, why was it already on maps? Wouldn't the sailors have to first take the long journey back, report of their discoveries, and then maps are redrawn? We see Australia on many pre-1606 maps. The mainstream narrative that it was discovered in 1606 is just flat out wrong. Fake history, not to mention that the Aborigines were there for thousands of years. This image shows a 1657 map of the Southern Hemisphere in which Antarctica is called Australia's incognita, unknown Australia. We see South America and Africa clearly delineated but the cartographer seems unclear on whether Australia is part of or separate from the Antarctic. The same insecurity is shown on a 1659 map. People went from being sure about Australia in the 1500s to being uncertain in the 1600s, and then again sure in the 1700s. This reveals something interesting about our real history. The same pattern can be seen on maps in Africa, America, and other places. In Africa, for example, places are named and kingdoms delineated in the 1500s. Then in the 1600s, the land shows up as unknown territory before returning to the known in the 1700s. I believe it's because of a cataclysmic event, possibly in the I-400s or 1400s, that spawned the age of discovery, actually an age of rediscovery. This is another map from 1566 showing Antarctic Australia. Historians say that's because they didn't know what was there, so they just made something up. Why would you make something up on otherwise accurate maps? This entire line of reasoning doesn't make sense. In those days map makers try to get their drawings as accurate as possible for their own reputation and as not to get shot. Here's a map from 1589 showing Antarctic Australia and the sunken kingdom of Lemuria mislabeled New Guinea here. Lemuria is clearly seen on many old maps. Historians tell us that all of these mapmakers are liars because, as we know, Lemuria is just a myth. 
I stopped listening to historians at around the time they told me that no human being had crossed the ocean in tens of thousands of years. By 1753, we see that the separation from the Antarctic is complete, but Tasmania and the mainland are still connected, just like the Aborigine myth said they were. This is James Cook map in 1770, still sees Tasmania connected. This 1780 map labels the country as Yuli Maroa, which is the Maori name for the country. The Maori people are the indigenous people of New Zealand. In 1802, post reset, Tasmania is finally separate from the mainland. In this 1806 map, the place is called Not Asia. Maybe it means Not Asia. This shows us that there were disagreements on what the place was called in the early 1800s. It's 1838 map, and there's still confusion on what to call places. This is because the early 1800s were a time of great worldwide upheaval and chaos, a fact omitted from our history books. But maps tell the story. This map from 1856 shows that modern Australia was defined in the mid-1800s, like so many other places in the world. Here's a screenshot from the Timeline of Australian History Wikipedia page. They teach 1606 is the first recorded landfall by a European on Australian soil through the Dutch East India Company, which was the most powerful multinational organization in recent history and probably still is, but in a hidden manner. Maps tell a different story. More info on Australia can be found in other videos on this channel. The fake history of Melbourne and Australia is not what it seems to be. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.